Well, we have a copy of the book on the table. This is not the book. The book is not this big. But anyway, this is a poster, and we'll be showing you a little bit more uh, with one of the photographs that we have coming up, uh, many photographs that you sent. Uh, it's really a delight to meet you. and Likewise. to um, To see your book, and I noticed, uh, and I, I have you bookmarked on my computer because uh, you can read part of the book on, yes. on uh, Am Amazon, is it? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I plan to do that. Um, and it, I have to tell you, every time I type it, surgeons, they want me to correct it. I know. But this is the spelling that it was. At the time, yes. Yeah. Yes. With it, without the E, it's an I. What got you started in writing a book, historical novel, first of all, which is very difficult to do because you've got to really look. There's an awful lot of research that goes into it. Uh, and I have to admit that it's been a lifelong passion, not only uh, medical history, but uh, military history. And I've studied and you, all my life. you've been in military. I was 16 years as a flight surgeon in the United States Navy and yeah. Naval Reserve, yes. So I've, I've gotten both sides of it. And uh, uh, I had my MFA degree uh, mm -hmm. granted uh, after I retired from surgery. So that brought you right into uh, to writing? Yes. Uh, I wrote a lot of scientific articles when I was That's a little different, practicing. though. Yeah, scientific article, because I've written some of those. And, and they're different it, than writing something It's like amazing that. the difference. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to do something a little bit more creative, frankly. Mm -hmm. And I, I love writing both fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And I started out with a fiction because it was just a story I had to tell. And I've been fascinated with that era, which is the Napoleonic mm -hmm. Wars, uh, 1805 to 1815. And uh, I just related and, uh, frankly, wrote almost autobiographical uh, sketch uh, for the protagonist, Jack Swift, in the story. Do, do you, is he based on a character that you, that you perhaps read about? or Not just, really. He, he's just a fictional character. He's a fictional character. But with but a historical in, in retrospect, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of me in him, mm -hmm. I have to admit. Oh, sure. You write about what you know, right? Exactly. What you know best, you write. Exactly. Exactly. And he's working his way up as a lowly lob lolly boy they called them because they handed out Say the porridge again. lob lolly it was a kind of porridge okay that the nurses or assistants what we call now like barley soup or something corman use, or yeah, yeah, yeah corman yeah. now in the navy uh would hand out to the sick and the wounded and uh he has greater ambitions because he's from an aristocratic family in france that escaped the great terror of the french revolution oh, okay so that's why he's doing something that would not be considered something that somebody in the, right. the elite would be doing. Right. And because of his fluency in French and knowledge and connections in France, he's sent back as a spy with the British Navy. And oh, there he nice. meets the true love of his life, Angeline. Yeah. So it's a mixture of medical history. He goes through two major battles, the Battle of Trafalgar which was the great naval battle between France and England that saved yeah, yeah. Uh, England from the invasion yeah. by Napoleon. And then the Battle of Jena, where he gets mixed up and is drafted into the French army. And, but he has to keep his cover. He can't blow his he cover. He can't blow his cover. And he tries desperately to get back with his new love to England. Let, let's take a look at some of the photos. Can we do that? Sure. Maybe we talk a little bit about the photos, because I love I mean, they are, one, they're paintings. I, oh, the sh all right, now here's, I put those two Those together. are our two protagonists. That's Angeline, is true love, and that's Jack Swift. Yeah, and, and this, uh, and I love this. You know I'm yeah, going to love that, right? Absolutely. Because I have some of those, you know. I something. know, yeah, I bet I, you do. I have some collections of collectibles. Uh, and uh, and that's his uh, disguise as a dragoon in the French okay. army. And I love the fact that you found a a photo or, or a or graphic, I'm sorry, of medical instruments at that right. time. They don't look too friendly. It looks like something that might have been used in some well, chamber I'm that you wouldn't <laughs> want to be in. <laughs> I've got to admit, the modern instruments aren't much better. No, they aren't much better. I have to <laughs> admit that, too. Just yeah. as frightening. Yeah, yes. And, and you had the pictures of the amputations and things like yes. that. And one of the things that people don't realize, they did a lot of that without... They didn't use anesthesia. No, they didn't. They give them a knock on the head and hope they knock them out. No, not <laughs> not really. They'd give them opium, yeah. brandy, yeah. and just tightening the tourniquet. It's like when your leg it, goes to it sleep. It goes, goes numb. It uh, it disrupts the blood the supply blood to flow. the nerves, and so the leg kind of goes numb. Plus, these people were brave. They weren't squeamish like we are these days. They could 
they just expected pain in their lives yeah, and yeah. could tolerate it. And the amputation took only a few minutes. Yeah, they... Yeah, and it was over with. Yeah. yeah. And the mortality was not much worse than it is nowadays. Is That's amazing without any antibiotics. Exactly. They, the penicillins exactly. and stuff didn't come in into the early, well, 1900s. Uh, so we, now we're looking at um, treatment without, I mean, it has to be aseptic. I mean, you, I mean, you, you don't want any right. antiseptic. You, you want. Yeah, but back then there was no concept of bacteria or antiseptic. Well, and it was interesting that we talk about that, that with childbirth, they would go, for that one time, they were going from patient to patient to patient without washing their hands. And it was worse, they'd go from the dissecting room, dissecting cadavers that were moldering, and go straight into the childbed wars, yes. And that's why women died of... Were dying right and left of purple fever. And that's why they fe felt it was better if they had their babies at home. It was safer, it probably was safer. Probably safer, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, when you look at how the... the um, I don't want to say, I, I use the word ignorance because that doesn't mean that there's something wrong. You just don't know about it. it, it that's the word that just shows that you're, it does, you just don't know. But they look at nowadays. Know. We don't know about Alzheimer's. We don't know about cancer. Parkinson's we don't know too. about psychiatric disorders. So 200 years, they'll be looking back on us it's as saying, ignorant. What? And they put them where? What? They yeah. didn't, why didn't they just do this? Yeah, you know, yeah I know, I know. Yeah. And of course, the research with, with drugs and with... Uh, Robotics, when you're looking at, at surgery, surgery amazing. now, they do things is, with robotics that yes. is amazing. I had a meniscus done, and it was like, bing, bing, it was sure. done. And especially in the military, where the best specialist may be 200 miles away from the front line yeah, yeah. and needs immediate surgery and can operate from long distance. Yeah. Amazing stuff. It's, it is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. They just, uh, it, well, you've seen it because you started out many years ago. I don't say that many years ago, but years ago when things were different. And vastly different, vastly on a dime. Different. They do, they do. You know, it, it's amazing. So this book kind of gives you a feel because you go into the the medical aspect of very the much so. Yeah. And I, again, thoroughly researched. Plus, so many books I've read about medical fiction. Unfortunately, I I don't mean to be disparaging, but the author isn't a physician, doesn't yeah, I love understand. Robin Cook because Robin Cook is just like he, right. once he's an ophthalmologist, I think. Yeah, right? so but he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. But they'll go to their own practitioner and say, "What would it be like if I get a stab wound yeah. in my leg?" And then they'll try and make it up. But I've seen this stuff. Every injury, every disease in the book, I've seen You've and seen. treated myself. Yeah. Oh my God. So I know what I'm talking about, and it, I'm. Unfortunately, it can get graphic, but then there's a lot of beautiful stuff in there and the romance and everything. Yeah, well, and the idea that, that as a physician, what you would do in private practice in, in your hometown is different than military practice. Let's face it, I mean, the injuries are, are much different. Yes. I mean, not that you, there couldn't be the same injury in both cases, but the fact is you're seeing a lot of trauma. Yes, but unfortunately, that's starting to shift because now we're starting to see the military kind of injuries military kind of weapons and and trauma in the civilian practice where people are using automatic yeah, I know, I weapons know. Yeah, you know, know. so I, I now mean, we're starting you, to see yeah. it yeah yeah so i guess uh, you know I, i'm thinking it wouldn't happen but yeah when you look at what happened in uh, las vegas yes. and things like that i mean yeah, there were so many things example. that it was they had their triages right there and right you just right. kind of have to be ready right yeah. Yeah. so i i thank you for writing this and well, I'm, thank I, you. I'm looking forward to a reading. When I it's getting reading. great reviews, yeah. and I'm very excited about it. It's just been out six months. And uh, and where can I get it? Uh, you can get it on Amazon. I'm trying to get it into Barnes and & Noble. And but check Amazon the open right door now. here in Schenectady. They're a wonderful bookstore, and they do a lot of uh, re you know. I plan to go there. Guests. Yes, yeah. yes. And um, Book I'm, I'm already writing a sequel. Yeah, cool. And uh, lastly, I'm writing a nonfiction book, which is the history of military medicine from antiquity, Greece and Rome, all the way up to the present. And oh this is God. something I've been working on all my life. And this is going to be a comprehensive book for the layman, not for you got Hippocrates professionals. In there, huh? You're going to throw oh, it. I'm going to go back to <laughs> Egypt. Are you kidding? I'm you going you're back going to all Egypt. The way back. Yes. <laughs> Samaria. Go to those tombs and find out what they were doing there. Did you ever figure out how they did um, you know, do the embalming? I yes. guess they just found out recently. I know how they did it. You did? Okay. Yes. If you, you want come me back and tell us about I'll show you. I'll give a demonstration. <laughs> oh, <no>. Whoa. <laughs>
<laughs> Not on me, please. But anyway, uh, check out the book, and you can get it on Amazon, and you'll be able to see it. I think he'll be up at Northshire in yes. Saratoga, and hopefully he'll be near at the uh, Open Door Bookstore. Uh, but we certainly want you to, to have some fun, read this, and, and get a feel for how lucky we are today. Oh, right. gosh. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure to have you. Such come a pleasure. you do your next one. I will. So, Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be uh, talking to our next guest, and we'll be talking about taxes. Oh, well, death and taxes. First death, now taxes. <laughs> Stay tuned.